All right, can everybody hear me? Just started streaming. I actually need to queue up music so my headphones don't die. Um, I'm not going to play music on the stream because I, I've i gotten better at talking so there's less dead air. And there's also, um, even though I like pick no copyright playlists and stuff on Spotify, that never works. So it's pretty lame. Uh, let's go to... <clears throat> Let's add in our own telegraph secrets today. Um, yeah, so black box monitoring is a thing now, and we can actually see how bad I haven't been able to keep up my own services here in a second. <laughs> Whoops. Um, I can explain this, I swear. Should be happy. Um, where's Bertolt? Bertolt should be up. Yeah, okay. Bertolt's online. Um, I've been having issues with a Fedora upgrade on a free IPA server, so I'm just going to revert the snapshot and come back to it when I have more time to look at it. Thankfully, you can skip a Fedora release, so I could go like straight from 38 to 40 and be fine. And it's supported for like a year. And it just came out... Um, they come out every about six months. So I got time to figure it out. So that's why I'm not super worried about it right now. So this black box <clears throat> monitoring nonsense, I started working on both streams since then. Um, I've been spending a bunch of time trying to get this finished um, because I'm trying to be more disciplined and work off of a roadmap instead of just like, ooh, shiny cool things. <laughs> um, also, thanks, Micah. This shirt's awesome. It's like a super comfy dry fit, but it looks like a real t-shirt too. With the new logos and stuff, I might have to get another one. Um, my wife and co-owner co of Shift Systems, Shelby, uh, redesigned the logo so it uses uh, straight lines instead of it being hand-drawn. So that way it looks better. So I guess before the stream gets going too far, we can show off all the cool new stuff on the website. And then I'll get back to actually doing black box monitoring things. So, Irvin, or er, shiftsystems.net. Switched our website over from Hugo and GitLab CI to like a normal content management system. Um, Hugo's pretty all right for a portfolio website or if you need to get it hosted for free. But if you need to do anything remotely elaborate, it's so much easier to use um, something like WordPress or Ghost. So, real website, pretty uh, logo with hand-drawn lines. Thanks again, Shelby, for that. Uh, stop the noises. Sorry about that. Let me shut off my phone quick. All right. So, we have all of our old blog posts. Um, all the YouTube channels actually have thumbnails with mine and Miku's face on it if they didn't have one already. Um, blog's there, contact form is there. We also have logos that took more than five minutes to make for the, <laughs> um, we actually have logos that isn't just like crappily editing in like a save icon and stuff. We went through a lot of painstaking work generating images and viewing them and actually modifying them. So it's really cool. And then ShiftWatch, which um, we're launching January 1st of 2024, is going to be a service where you could actually have us monitor your ShiftMon instance for you. So self-hosted monitoring is really cool. It's really nice just to be able to like yeet data from your Kubernetes cluster and not have to worry about the cardinality nightmare um, on your cloud bill later. 
But one downside is is you messing up your other infrastructure puts your monitoring in the blast radius. So you can make a change. It blows up all your infrastructure and you don't know that you blew up all your infrastructure. Um, you think everything's fine because none of your alerting is going off. So shift watch will um, monitor your shift one instance um, do some health checks on all the services, monitor the containers that make up Shiftmon, and then send you an alert if it doesn't receive data in a given amount of time or notices like super high latency or something like that. So that way you can kind of get the best of both worlds where you know if something's going wrong and uh, you don't have to worry about learning what a time series is just to observe your data um, and having to come up with those goofy estimates that are probably going to be wrong. And everything with Shift Mon is still going to remain free. It is a permissively licensed project you can kind of do whatever with. And then if you do need help, either with implementation, automation stuff, with or that does or doesn't have to do with observability, we do have hourly consulting as well. Also, our team pages. My wife updated her picture to prove that she is a champ. Um, me doing my crappy It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia impression. And the real hard workers of our staff, our animals, our chief executive officer, our Bork-based intrusion detection system that does his best, and the Chaos Kitty. All right. <clears throat> so black box monitoring. Um, we now have HTTP uptime, DNS uptime, or not uptime. Um, simple ping checks and um, TCP response time. We don't have UDP yet. So since UDP, there's no inherent response, you could just send a packet and it will think it's okay. Um, you need to have a response text and I don't have a good example laying around of um, a UDP service that I know the text response to and decided to make that future, uh, future Tiny's problem to fix. But UDP support will come, so I've been labeling it generically. It uses the same telegraph input plugin and such. And then your certificate, um, certificate lifetime. One cool thing about using telegraph to monitor certificates is that it will actually grab the CA cert and any intermediate certs in between uh, the actual leaf cert and the parent or the certificate cert. So that way you can see that um, your certificate authority is about to expire and that's the problem, not the fact that the certificate that you got issued was the problem. Um, I got bit super hard by the Let's Encrypt uh, intermediate CA issue a couple years ago. So ever since then I've wanted something that can grab the, um, grab the, the CA cert and the actual cert on your website. Um, need to figure out who's issuing outdated Let's Encrypt certs. And one other thing too is you could actually um, change your name or change the name of the certificate too. That's super duper nice. Um, so let me double check that my stream inventory is still good. And I can show you how this actually all gets implemented. And Micah, shield your eyes. There is about to be a lot of YAML. So my not apologies in advance. Um, and then CD repo. Okay, so this is how all of this works. This is defining um, the black box checks, where they go for hosts, and all that good stuff. So we have our host. We're just deploying this to Irvin. We'll add a second host, because um, that's a super cool feature about Shift, Shift Mod's black box monitoring versus like Uptime Kuma. <laughs> Ha 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 ha. 
I broke the stream with white spacing. Um, do I still have good stream health? OBS sounds happy. Okay, so here we have just setting up the um, here we are setting up the environment variables that are getting sourced for secrets. Um, you could this is how I deploy Shipmon through Woodpecker CI is secrets from Woodpecker get stored as environment variables and jobs. Also, so I could show you what I'm doing with inventory on stream. Um, we have that as well. And here we have the black box URLs. So these are the URLs that are being checked. They can be as simple as just having a URL. Then the default is like, I expect a 200 return code and I'm gonna check every minute. Like there's a bunch of pretty sane defaults that are there and they can get as elaborate as, I think Loki's the fanciest. So you can actually look for the return string that you want and all that healthy stuff. I should also see if I can use minimized. I think you can use, I think to troll Micah, um, Ansible inventory support JSON. And I could just use minimize JSON to deploy it just to make him either very sad or very happy. Um, yeah, so you could even check for like certain pages should redirect. Um, and then you could also name them so you have a human readable thing and alerts and checks and stuff like that. Then DNS, similar story. Um, we have the DNS server the name of the check and the domain to look up. Um, you can even do, I've, you've probably noticed that the hub's been on there a few times, not GitHub. Um, and the reason for that is I love DNS filtering and I want to make sure that it's working because DNS filtering, it's something not responding. So it's handy to have uh, something that's super obvious because I don't, go on to my kids' VLAN and try to look up inappropriate things. So having a monitoring check do that for you is really nice too. And then black box ping. Uh, there are more complicated options, but you can just simply do, hey, this is the host I want to ping. Then it deploys. Um, so I did notice when I was researching um, what URLs to look up for Shiftmon that some of these should have um, some of these should have URLs in them that have like a health check. So Grafana, Loki, and Victoria Metrics all have health check endpoints that should be used instead of the base URL. So we need to go to this guy for Victoria metrics, put that there and forget that we copied in the URL. And then we want to put in, oh, what's that variable name? Um, Loki, literally right above it. Response underscore string. Now, should be able to do response string here. And then Grafana should also have one as well. Response string. And then I forget the one for Grafana. 
had the health endpoint somewhere. At least I thought I did. Ah, at least I thought I did. Um, I think this is the one where I got stuck because it was a regex. Fauna health check URL. Um, should be good to share this on stream. So there should be an API health endpoint. And then that returns like version information and stuff. So I want to try to find database OK in that response. So now um, instead of login, we want to do API health. And then we want to have, this is going to get weird. I forget how I have the strings in the template. Um, I might figure this out off stream because I'm going to start using regexes on in public and that's just not great. Because your IQ point drops the more people that are watching you type. So maybe doing regexes isn't the best idea right now. So we've made those changes. How do we see those changes applied to our fleet? Um, we run shift env, which is really just uh, running an Ansible playbook and setting a bunch of environment variables. And I can display that Ansible command after this too. So that way everybody can see. JSON's not bad as far as like structured language goes. Um, Micah, have you ever messed around with HCL before, the HashiCorp language, or HashiCorp language? I think it's weird The like, list and data structures seem more sane in YAML or JSON to me. then Telegraph will restart if needed. But if we run this again, um, we shouldn't see anything else change. And Telegraph won't need to restart. And then one other thing we just, or I'm about to actually add is the alerting for all of these things is also going to be documented. Um, I haven't documented a way to add automatic, like to manage your Grafana alerts as code yet. Um, part of that is I want people to know where the bodies are buried for alerting. Oh, that is a hot take. Um, XML. That's that's an interesting one. I'm I'm curious why XML. It's very difficult to write or read as a human, in my opinion, and it's very text heavy. Um, also, since I'm a youngin, I've only dealt with one API that used XML, and that was UPS, and their API sucked for a bunch of other reasons. It wasn't documented very well, and the data would have different names for what I viewed as the same thing. So, yeah. Part of it might be colored by that. Um, otherwise, like, XML is just kind of a pain in the butt to sift through for me. JSON over YAML I could see, because it's very easy to send over a wire for machines to use. And you could easily explode it to be like human readable too. Then all of our health checks saw bear tilts up, so now his uptime's gonna start creeping back up as well. XML pays my bills. I didn't know you were a .NET developer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
that is fair to use something like I like this thing because I pays my bills is very difficult to argue with, uh, to argue with. Um, so yeah, we have a pretty dashboard to see all your black box monitoring. Um, then we also have alerting as well. So some pretty simple queries that will report if all your, uh, you know, there we go. I've tested this out and I'm actually running this on my infrastructure, which is very nice. Um, and then we have the query here, the result, and then it'll report, oh no. Um, we're actually going to fire an alert because the URL changed, which isn't a huge deal. Um, the way the query works is it uses the lag operation, which is just asking when was the last time I saw a healthy result from this URL. Um, this alert also won't fire f unless it's down from all endpoints. So in a second here, um, in a second here, I'm going to show adding a second probe and then how much easier that is. I am not fond of PowerShell. I guess I'm not fond of anything that's super object oriented. Like even when I want write Python, which has a bunch of object oriented stuff for it, I don't write in a very OO way. But I'm also not that good of a dev. Um, so let's compare this to, let's compare what we have to uptime Kuma. Um, I'm going to say some things I don't like about Uptime Kuma. However, I think it is very useful and a very good project for people who need it. Um, so if I wanted to edit this check here because the URL changed, very simple to do through a user interface. Um, save, done, voila. My next cloud server is down, but uh, I don't want to talk about my jank next cloud role. Um, so same thing here, if I wanted to edit, um, Aaron, oh, I don't have that one in here yet. So if I wanted to add the health check for Aaron, super easy. It's as simple as editing a YAML file. Um, since it's Ansible, you could use JSON too. So we go to... Aaron shift systems.net. C file. Boom. Um, actually, you know, check with curl really quick that that's the correct thing to do. So, curl head local. What URL did I use? Was I lazy and just did the 4xx? Um, oh no. What the heck? Did I not? Oh, is it pedantic and. No. Why the. So I'm trying to figure out why this gives me that it's okay. It might be a user agent thing that C file does. I'll have to debug it, but. So it has a better user agent, I'm guessing, than um, curl. So. Oh, I'm still using the local. Yep, so I get a 302 on the CLI, which is fine. Um, so editing my inventory. I go here. Expected status code. 302. Then write and apply the Ansible, super easy. But what Uptime Kuma doesn't do 
is I can only monitor. There's no like notion of a separate probe that runs checks on behalf of the server and then sends them back. So right now there's nothing else um, monitoring this. So if I need to do maintenance on the uptime Kuma instance, I'm not gathering uptime or anything like that, which isn't that great. So, so like earlier today, I upgraded the version of Fedora on Irvin, and I was not able to gather um, the whole time. I It showed that all of these checks were down, even though they were perfectly healthy. But if I wanted to run all these health checks on... Um, Dot already does a lot. Let's say I wanted to get the perspective from a different VLAN, so I put the kids' DNS server, which is Gother. Then we write quit that. So scaling this horizontally is way better than uptime Kuma. Um, So it's going to add the repo for everything. So I don't have like this as pretty of a UI where I can manage and edit all the checks. Um, but I get horizontal scalability. I don't have to set up the alert every time. And you're going to see in a second that I've configured about 30 checks just by adding a line of YAML. Um, and if I wanted one of those checks to go away, it would be as simple as removing it from inventory and then deleting four files on that server. And then that way, when I upgrade Gother or Irvin, I'm still getting black box data. Also, Micah, I feel for you. Um, there is some skullduggery I've seen where the vendor API only supported PowerShell. And then in order to get information from that API into something that could be consumed by something else, it had to be called, the PowerShell was getting called by a Ruby script to output the data in the correct format. It was so, uh, so bizarre. Yeah, Uptime Kuma is cool. There's only one user and there's not a native way to interact with it programmatically or, or using any sort of automation. I believe there's a Python wrapper for it, but there's still only one user for it. So that's not going to make a lot of enterprises happy. Um, perfectly fine for a home lab. Like, I didn't have any reason to get rid of Uptime Kuma because the only people using it are me and my wife and we have a password manager so sharing the admin cred isn't a huge deal but in a business that'd be a huge no-no um whereas grafana works with sso and your automation systems can have sso put in front of them as well so there's not that weird security issue there um also this supports multiple probes so both will be there i don't plan on deprecating the part of shiftmon that installs uptime kuma anytime soon but I do plan on focusing more of this, more on this. If we do want a prettier dashboard and Grafana next to all your other alerts, there's still the um, there's still the uptime Kuma cert, but I need to figure out why I'm not getting data from it. Um, 30 days. Something changed with a key. Um, so yeah. Something happened on the second that I'll need to figure out later, but for now it's fine. Um, so Micah asked about uptime Kuma alternatives. The other one I saw that was really good was stat ping ng. And I think they're working on that ping ng yeah it's showing up in my history so like 
Um, so I've used it before. But the issue here, I believe it had multiple users, but not multiple locations. And I think this even had SSO. The reason why I didn't pick this over Uptime Kuma was I think it was matrix support. So you can send a matrix alert from Uptime Kuma and it was super easy to do. I didn't have to use like any jank webhook stuff or anything like that. Um, and it's super well maintained. They have like their own dedicated app, which is really nice. Um, there is a webhook support too, but getting, uh, getting that into matrix would require another service. That was the main alternative. Um, if you want to manage service, there's Grafana synthetic monitoring, which isn't bad. I've used it before. Uh, the issue is. Grafana Synthetic Monitoring. So Grafana Synthetic Monitoring is cool, but it uses the Grafana agent and not Telegraph. So there's some issues with um, having the Grafana agent. You'd have to manage that and the, uh, or no, Synthetic Monitoring is separate from Grafana agent. So it's a separate agent that just does synthetic monitoring. And I believe it has to have some interaction with a Grafana cloud service. So you can't run it completely by yourself. Um, there's also no UDP check, which you can do with Telegraph, given the caveat it has to have a response string. Um, you can interact with Grafana Cloud Synthetic Monitoring through <clears throat> through a local instance of Grafana, but I believe the data sources have to show up through an API. So you can't have the Grafana Synthetic Monitoring agent running on your infrastructure reporting to your infrastructure. You can run private instances of Grafana Synthetic Monitoring like in your inside of your LAN, but you can't have that report to your stuff. I might be wrong about that. Ooh, there is an uptime Kuma package in Nix. There's a telegraph package inside of Nix too. I don't think you can access like all 200 plugins for it though. Time Kuma and X. This would actually be super easy to package in Nix. Um, running it in a container is also insanely easy too if it wasn't supported. But yeah, um, Time Kuma is super cool. Don't get me wrong but it just doesn't scale out to the extent that I would like it. But if you're running a home lab or you're like a one man band IT, like this is uptime Kuma is great. If you want to scale out to have multiple monitors, not so much. So now if we go back to this uptime, or not uptime, black box. If we go back to the black box dashboard, we can now see that we have checks coming from both Gother and we have health checks coming from Irvin. So now if I were to shut off Irvin, um, that alert wouldn't fire as it would before. That's super nice. Um, also, the filter tables are really nice here, too. And one other thing is the data you're dealing with shows up consistently. Um, whereas if you're using Grafana Synthetic Monitoring, it shows up. It's almost like its own little world and not just more telemetry data. Telemetry taters you're dealing with. Telemetry data you're dealing with. Words are hard. So if I, I go into Explorer, um, 
I have to go back like seven days or 30 days or whatever. What the heck? So like uptime Kuma shows up in here, but it requires like scraping a weird API and whatnot. Um, whereas the HTTP response, it all kind of goes through Telegraph. <clears throat> I feel like telemetry taters is, uh, there's something there. There's something to do with that. Or there's something we can do with telemetry taters. By next stream, it'll probably be an inside joke or a product or something. So something that I realized was super helpful when I was um, working on black box monitoring was being able to... Um, was, I was able to interact with, uh, Jesus, can't even spell. I was able to de black box. I was able to do this little trick where I could put in a secret, oh crap. Um, I was able to put in a secret right there. So what this uh, dollar sign thing does in a telegraph config is that it <clears throat> will say, oh, everything after this dollar sign is a variable name, and that variable name is stored in a file called Etsy default telegraph. And I'm aware that there are other places in the shift mon system that instead of putting them in that place or eventually using the secrets manage or the secret store inside of telegraph, it's just being plopped out there. And I think we can do better. We can be better than that. So I want to add the ability for users to populate at the default telegraph. That's the next thing I wanted to work on. Um, So we are going to look at roles, template, or roles, telegraph templates, and then, wait. That's the default telegraph. Template, okay, it's telegraph defaults J2. So this mess is where we would put user defined secrets. So users can put uh, LDAP bind passwords for the open LDAP integration, um, vSphere, all that good stuff. But I want to put in a little for loop that will go for user secret in user secrets. Um, for user secrets and user secrets um, then do and for then um, name So then it would just be name equals secret. And then I need to make sure that this is set up as an empty dictionary or there's some logic to do like a something to make sure that I don't blow everything up. Oh, you can hear Miku on stream. Not even time for a treat yet. 
But after this, we should go hang out with her. YAML empty dictionary. Yay, so Stack Overflow with the answer there. I'm an old man who don't use ChatGPT yet. So to make sure that we don't have to deal with an undefined, um, in, instead of making this template messier, Ansible has uh, something called defaults. So we can just go into the defaults file and then say user secrets is an empty dict or an empty dictionary. And then when we run the role, if user secrets aren't defined, it should just work fine. Um, or an empty list is, or an empty dictionary is going to make it poo itself. We'll find out. Um, so I'm going to go off camera for a second and edit my inventory. I'm going to try to not have secrets on stream as often as I have in the past. And then wait, why am I doing that as a root? Um, all I did was add the empty dictionary in there as well. So now we should be able to run shift end again. Hopefully I put in the right password. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure Bento's in his box right now, and I can pull that up and forget pretty easily. Bento's hilarious to stream, too. Um... Especially the one night we thought it would be a good idea to put him in like a small kennel to make him feel like, okay, I'm in my kennel, the door's shut, I need to go to sleep. He decided to become ungovernable and break out. Um, that was super funny when he did that. I could probably pull that up super quick too. That is true. Probably is down there. Um, I do not have it handy. So. I don't have it handy in a way that isn't gonna, like, show things that shouldn't be shown on stream. <sighs> so, we are going to check what happened to Etsy default telegraph because it's the thing that populates secrets um, come on come on show up Awesome. So it does work with an empty dictionary. 
as expected. Oh, crap, I didn't save. Well, so much for that theory. I honestly don't know what will happen. I know if it's undefined, it will break. I don't know if it's empty, it will break. It's one of those classic, like, zero versus null things. God, man. Should have done the start at task. All right. Wait, defaults would have already gotten populated by now. Okay, so running it without secrets worked just fine. Um, I'm going to confirm that off camera really quick. Yep, so it just didn't do anything with the empty array. But what happens if I put in like a key value array inside of the secrets file? So if we go nvim stream inventory instead of the empty array, I'll comment it out to make sure defaults is behaving too. Um, we'll pretend ah shouldn't do launch code. Um, tater spud. So now we should be able to, um, I need to make sure I can do some bash foo to make this work while that's running. Um, tail n1, etsy defaults telegraph. Yeah. Cool. So as you can see right now, the last line in that file isn't a secret. Well, that's not good. Too many values expected to. Well, poop. Um, the heck, too many values to unpack? Oh, for loop does items by default, or um, for loop does a list, not a dictionary by default. Not too hard to fix, thankfully. Um, yeah, um, Bento probably is on the couch. Not in camera view, sadly. He's he's a little stinker, to be honest, though. Okay. Um, yay! Adding in a secret works. That actually went way easier than I thought. Venta's a little turd. He'll like do pretty much anything to get away from people. So he was a, a shelter dog, or not shelter dog. He was owned by a breeder and then abandoned or not abandoned surrendered to an organization called Sira, which they help Shiba good Shiba Inus from around the Midwest find forever homes. Um, sometimes that's due to like a puppy mill bust or other times it's a breeder surrendering them for whatever reason. But he, he gives off some mad vibes like he was mistreated in a past life. So he is very distrustful of humans and it's very difficult to condition him to be like, dude, we just want to pet you and give you treats. Like, yeah, it's kind of crappy. It has been super rewarding though, to see like his tail curl up every day. So something about Shiba Inus, you can kind of 
gauge their mood pretty well based on their tail. So their um, their tail's like a little cinnamon bun, and um, their tail's like a little cinnamon bun, and then if they're uh, trying to get this on camera, their tail will like curl up and in like that, and then if they're sad, it'll like go down between their legs. It'll unwind and go down between their legs, and it used to be like if he wasn't laying down, his tail was just straight between his legs. And now the only time his tail isn't like curled up and looking like the Debian logo, um, he's like when we're trying to corral him outside. So that's been super rewarding to see his like little tail turn into a Debian logo. Maybe he's just running Debian and it's taking him a little while to update, but. So we have that feature in. Um, we actually have all the alerting set up, and we have about 10 minutes to go through stream. So let's go through the release process. Um, actually, we need to do one more test before this is ready for release. So, and then stream, or yeah. So let's go through our inventory. Let's make sure that um, let's make sure that this works. And while this is running, we are going to branch our code. So get checkout tag B. Add user secrets. I think there's a ticket on that too. Um, gitlab.com This is the GitHub page. Shelby, if you could link this, that would be awesome. So we have our CI, we have our issues. I had a lot of problems. Yep, 182. Um, so 182, I think you have to put the hash mark in for GitLab to see it. So now we have our defaults here for user secrets that worked. Now we're back to flush interval being the last line in that file. So it worked. Make sure your telegraph is happy. Probably should have checked that on the other one too. Um, could actually see that in Grafana. Make sure that there is like no gap in collection or anything like that. Um, go to the last hour. And actually, we could just go to Linux hosts. Then add in Gother. So we have no issues with metrics in the last 15 minutes. So that means when we edited the defaults file, it didn't make Telegraph cry or do anything wrong. So now. We have our branch. We are going to add in this guy. Um, we're going to add in alerting docs. And this guy right here. ButterFS is um, going to be a work in progress. There's no Telegraph plugin for it. So I've had to write bash scripts. That's going to need some more testing. So, um, all right, let's be a good boy and actually, what is it? Micah actually knows Git, so there's like some, okay, I actually have to do things correctly or I'm going to get roasted. And also feel free to tell me that I'm doing stuff wrong with Git. I know I'm not great at it, so. Any criticism will be taken as positive feedback in this case. 
So we want Galaxy to get updated. So we bump the release in Galaxy. That gets incremented by one. We're going to make a commit for updated alerting docs to include black box. And then we are going to make another commit that has all the actual technical changes to it. Um, add it. So then this would be fixed hash 180 or 182 added user secrets then we're gonna do a push oh cool <laughs> I think the misses realized. Yeah, the little pango. Uh, I have to update the logo here too. It's a draw.io file. I'll we can deal with it later. So what should happen now is we should have a CI job running somewhere. Pipelines. the heck oh uh. maybe I forgot I have a YubiKey set up push okay boop um what happened there was my SSH keys protected by a u2f key And it asked me, like, hey, how's the U2F key doing? Or uh, please verify that this is your SSH key by tapping your YubiKey. <clears throat> so on every other branch, we do a couple infra, uh, we do an infra's code scan and run Ansible Lint. So to make sure everything's up to par with our code, we make sure there's, uh, Kix will make sure there's no secrets in it. Um, it'll make sure we're following some best practices and then Ansible link gets run to make sure that the Ansible code is looking good and also that it'll publish correctly on Galaxy. When I initially started publishing things to Ansible Galaxy, I noticed that if you have code that runs but isn't linted, um, I forget which checks it was failing, but if your code worked but wasn't linted, it wouldn't publish correctly, so I just decided, well, to heck with it, I'm going to start doing the right thing and use Ansible Lint. Um, this is Kix. It's short for Keep Infrastructure Code Secure. <clears throat> It'll take Ansible Terraform and I believe CloudFormation and a couple of other things and then make sure that your YAML isn't like hard coding secrets or doing anything silly like that. Then the next step is going to be Um, pipelines. Next up is going to run Ansible Lint, which takes a bit long in a GitLab pipeline because it doesn't cache, but it's usually not too bad. Wait, isn't this? Yeah, Ansible Lint. Yeah, Ansible Lint's happy. So now that that code's happy, we're gonna make a merge request. Um, I don't have approval approval set up. We don't have enough maintainers for that yet, but that's something we wanna add. That is best practice for Git is to make sure that there is proper code review and somebody else looked at it. But we're a pretty small team, so it's difficult to do that. Then this will kick off the release pipeline, which does the same two scans over again. 
and then it will um, release it to prod. So if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to talk about it in chat. I think I could set it up so that Cakes and Lent don't run on the merge, but the issue I'm worried about, like, some weird edge case I can't even conceive of right now, where it a change would happen in between when the MR was put in and the pipeline was run and stuff. I'd have to rearrange some other things to make it so that the merge onto master just runs the release to Galaxy. Um... So it's just easier to spend the couple minutes building it. So now um, this pipeline is just a little bit different. Should have the... There should be a way to view the YAML without going back to the repo, but this is just running through um, publishing it to Galaxy. So if you can r like clone the repo from Git and run everything from there, um, <clears throat> you can run the repo, do everything from there, or you could use Ansible Galaxy to deploy it, which will show using my self-hosted Woodpecker instance. Which I need to do more videos on Woodpecker. I think the highest watched video that Shift's ever done was about Woodpecker. And Woodpecker is an amazing tool. I think it would be about um, using Woodpecker versus using Ansible Semaphore and which one strives better in which places. Also, that would give me a really good chance to complain about how much of a pain in the ass AWX is which AWX is cool if you're a big business and if you're anything else, it is a bunch, uh, it is a very big tool that does a lot of things that aren't needed outside of big enterprises. Um, one thing that is nice and that will show up here is, um, one thing that's nice about AWX is that you can create pre-built execution environments pretty easily. Um, you can create your own container inside of a CI or construct the Ansible environment around Ansible Semaphore, but it's kind of like a native feature and you can tie like which, uh, which jobs take which execution environments very easily, but getting all that set up is a nightmare and a half. So now we should have that code pass. And we can just view our jobs here. So three stages to the job, kicks. This is basically copy pasted from their documentation. Um, there's some queries where they get mad if you use like latest instead of hard pinning dependencies. That is a topic I could go on a super long rant on because the way it's implemented in most enterprises is badly, <laughs> um, or is very poor. And a couple of other things that, um, I think it's like, there's a couple examples in the documentation that have like a variable named password that it gets angry about. But we can also view the report and we can see the uh, reports in the pipeline. Ansible Lint, it's just grabbing the container from the GitLab registry and running Ansible Lint inside of it. And then this is here saying that I'm the only uh, only run on the main branch for shift RMM and then um, build the release and yeet it to Ansible Galaxy. There's some magic to get the file name right, but yeah, that's pretty much it. 
So then once that release is deployed, I can consume that release through Woodpecker CI. So I can run a job, feed it the role name, um, shiftmon, and then run the pipeline like so. So now this is the, one of the few times I'm thankful for AW, um, AWX is that I don't have to pull all the latest, or um, is that every time I run this container, I have to wait for dependencies to update and there's caching rules you can set up for um, AWX. But Semaphore and Woodpecker, I believe by default, they just will always pull in all your dependencies for you. And then what this looks like inside of um, Woodpecker is you can actually have a folder. I um, should be able to show the Ansible jobs on stream. So you can either have a dot woodpecker ci.yaml or you can have a dot woodpecker folder. And here, similar sort of infrastructure as code scanning, where we're just making sure we're not putting secrets and our Ansible isn't garbage. Um, this little weird hack is basically so Woodpecker doesn't freak out. If there's no jobs for Woodpecker to run on every branch, it just wigs out. So this just says, um, takes the CentOS minimal container and prints something out. I want to make it say, uh, fig or use figlet to make it look pretty, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Various roles. Um, here's the Shiftmon role. So using these secrets, run this playbook. Uh, use the inventory specified. Use the Galaxy requirements and the Python requirements needed. What user to run as, all that good stuff. Um, I don't think I can show my inventory on stream right now, but I think I can show what shiftmon.yaml looks like. Here, not here, Ansible jobs. Let me double check really quick. Um, I think we're good and it's private, so I can just rekey it off stream. And yes, AWS is confusing too, along with uh, Ansible AWX. The product version of it is called Tower. It's the like Red Hat, you pay Red Hat a ton of money for it version. So this is what the inventory looks for. Basically from here all the way down to, Jesus, <laughs> there's a lot of secrets here, is setting up variables or down to line 82 is basically just saying, these are the secrets I need to set up Shiftmon. And then once you get to here, it's just consuming everything from Galaxy. So deploy Docker to it. Um, Deploy Telegraph, pretty simple. It's really weird to think that the like, I just need to grab all these secrets is going to be a bigger deal than, um, is, takes more code than to actually run the jobs. But since the jobs are just importing, yeah, take too long. So after we spend uh, like three minutes just downloading stuff from Galaxy, yeah, about three minutes downloading stuff from Galaxy, three and a half, we actually start deploying stuff. 
And this is something that uh, shift systems can do for you too. So if you don't want your employees deploying all their infrastructure from their laptop and you don't get like the pretty saved output of this, we'll help you integrate Shiftmon into your CI system. So we're setting up CrowdSec now. Telegraph's pretty much more of the same. Um, we're just setting the secrets for um, accessing Loki and Victoria metrics and sending it out to the server. Also, one thing I have set up is matrix notifications. So I actually get a notification, um, good or bad, about the build, which is super handy. Yep. Roll finished. And now we should be good to go. So I'm going to um, cue our amazing new outro music. <laughs>